So let's begin to think now about how images are saved on a computer. Here's a very simple image here. It's 32 pixels by 32 pixels. We'll have, to have a think about what that means in a minute. If I zoom in on it, this is about as far as it can go. This is just using paint, so it's a very straightforward program. If I turn the grid lines on, what this then shows us is all the individual pixels that make up this image. Uh, the pixel is basically the smallest area of the image which can be colored in. And as I said, this one is 32 pixels wide and 32 pixels tall. As we've already seen when considering how computers store numbers and letters, uh, the answer is they store them as binary numbers, so zeros and ones, and it's no different with pictures. Uh, in this picture, it's fairly straightforward. We could represent all the white squares as zeros and all the black squares as ones, uh, and that could then be saved uh, in a file in on the computer's hard disk. If we pick a slightly different picture now and have one which is got a little bit of color to it. Uh, in this situation, it's a little more tricky. We've got white and black as before, but we've got two other colors. So we've got four colors in total. In this situation, we can't just have one bit to represent the color. So we're going to need more bits. In this case, we've got four colors and we can therefore use two bits for each pixel to store the color. It might be that zero zero stores the white uh, 1, 1 maybe stores the black, and then we could assign 0, 1 for the yellow and 1, 0 for the red. Uh, and so this picture could be then stored, each pixel being represented by two bits. Let's finish up then by replacing some of these pixels with their binary representation, the reds 1, 0, the yellows 0, 1s, and so on. And if we remove the image from the background, we're left with the contents of the file. 